So Nathan, yes. good morning. Good morning. We are about to drive 13 hours we from <laughs> Los Angeles, California to Idaho Falls. Why are we doing that? To see one thing move in front of another thing. Awesome. I mean, it's not every day that the planets align, and the chance to be able to go and see that, well, it's, it's pretty awesome and rather humbling. So is this it? I think this is it. Well, we finally made it to the Sawtooth National Forest, which is where we'll be camping and waiting for this eclipse to happen tomorrow morning. Where we are is right on the band of totality for the eclipse, which means that if you move farther north or south, you get less coverage of the sun, but where we are, the sun is going to be completely covered for about 2 minutes 10 seconds. I have to say there's something really cool about being out here under the open sky waiting for this eclipse to happen. Tomorrow morning millions of people are going to step outside and they're going to look up and in unison think about how really very tiny we are on our little blue planet spinning circles through this vast universe. And it's hard to not be in all of that. So for photographing this eclipse, you typically want special filters for your camera, but Dr. Williams over here has uh, jerry-rigged this, this beautiful piece of engineering he has taken a pair of eclipse viewing glasses and is going to attach them to the end of his camera for safe photography. It's suboptimal, but uh, at least for my camera in particular, it has worked in the past. This is a NASA engineer, ladies and gentlemen. This is being cheap. It works. There even appear to be some sunspots on the sun. So the eclipse starts around 10, which is now at 11.30. We should have complete coverage, and then it'll take until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon for the moon to completely finish moving across the sun. It's starting! So here at the very start of the eclipse, you can see it's still very bright, very daytime outside. And we're very curious to see how dark it's going to get. So this is just a pinhole projector. I poked a pinhole in this box and essentially the sun's rays from the top of the sun are going in here and projecting down. The sun's rays from the bottom of the sun are going through the hole and projecting up. So it's just an inverted image of the sun. If you hold the white sheet of paper, you can see a projection of what the sun looks like. So similar to the pinhole projector that you can make with a box, if you look at um, leaves on a tree, you can also see the same sort of effect if there's just very small gaps that the sun can pass through. So normally you just see, well, there's a patch of bright light, but during uh, a partial eclipse, it's the same pinhole projector sort of thing, and you end up getting a crescent, like we're seeing here. 
As it gets darker, it's getting noticeably colder. And the bugs are coming back out. The light levels are definitely dropping. It's getting a lot dimmer. Except it's like almost noon. We're down to just a sliver. It should be any minute now. Oh my. And glasses off. Holy crap. Well, it happens. Pan up, pan up, pan up. Wow. It is nighttime right now. This is amazing. You know, I have to say, I wasn't 100% sure how cool that would be. That was really cool. Awesome. Hey Nathan, how awesome was it? That was totality awesome! Well Nathan? Yes, here. I think our work here is done. I agree.